I have been pushing my Turkish quite a lot in 2022 and I feel like I've made quite a lot of progress. Türkçe bana çok ilginç ama bence Türkçem yeterli değil. Yani bu ay boyunca Türkçemi çalışıyorum. I think my language learning method is really random. I do have my goals like I talked about before, but I allow myself to do lots of activities within that goal. Really, whatever I feel like doing is what I'll do. If I could describe my language learning method, it'd be like choosing the flavor of the month. Because one month it's going to be Türkçe, the other month it's going to be Deutsch. Like just whatever I'm feeling, I'm going to learn it. Even within that language, when I'm going hard on it for like a month or two months, I'm going to do whatever I want in that month. Am I going to play a video game? Am I going to watch YouTube videos? Am I going to watch uh, Disney movies? Whatever I feel like. Because at the end of the day, I'm very focused on my goal. I want to improve the language, so it's not like I'm going to lie to myself. I really am going to do these things. It's just a matter of which do I feel like doing. While I'm working hard on one, I'm probably maintaining another, which I've talked about on this channel before. But in terms of activities, I think I'm really spontaneous. Really, the only thing that I'm committed to is doing Anki every single day because if I do it every single day the word count stays low but if I miss a few days then the word count gets like out of control. I really like to focus on reading, on writing, on listening because I think those are all really key skills in order to get a lot of input. Notice I didn't say speaking just now. To get out of the little Turkish language rut that I'm in, I booked a lesson on italki and told myself, no, you are speaking Turkish. Uh, this week, I hope to change my inaction in terms of Turkish speaking and really speak with someone. This is a really big step for me because I am someone who really likes to be attached to books, videos, the comfort of my room. But now I'm putting myself in the discomfort of being in a Zoom call with a Turkish speaker. So right now I'm before my first Turkish lesson on italki and I'm feeling very nervous but the way that I handle lessons is I try to uh, get my goals down. On my notebook I kind of wrote the goals for today's lesson. My main goal, because I've never had a lesson before, is just survive the 30 minutes. My other goal is to get the basic classroom expressions like how do I say X? Um, is it natural to say X? I want to learn these expressions today. So going into a lesson, if you have a bit of a goal, I think it'll end a little bit more successfully. As for the fear thing, um, I don't know uh, how to fix that. Um, I have about 20 minutes before my lesson, so I'm just going to listen to some Turkish music and uh, I don't know, look up some keywords that I should probably know before this lesson and uh, hopefully we're golden. Merhaba. Um, i̇yiyim. Uh, uh, siz nasılsınız? Aha, okay. uh, tamam. Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, sini sinirliyim, <laughs> üzgünüm. Hey Canla, aha, hey. John la Okuyor? Okuyor? Like, kitap? Oh, orange, uh, orange deal. Um, uh, i, i, işim? Işim? Işim, um, a ch, ch, ch, uh, um, I talk ki, um, öğretmen, uh, olarak. Uh, çalışıyor um. Bir yaşında uh, olduğumda uh, Amerika ya uh, gel geldik. Um, İngilizce konuşuyor konuşuyorum konuşuyorum uh, ve um, of oh, school school school ne doğru. Oh cool, oh cool. Oh cool da Fransızca, Fransızca. Um, öğrendim. Um, ve uh, yalnız um, dil uh, öğrenmek um, öğren... Hayır. 
oren meyi seviyorum. Um, uh, mesel, mesela um, kur, Koreca, Koreca, uh, ya Korece uh, ve Japonca ve uh, ne di- diğer Farsça ve uh, Arapçadan gelen um, kelime uh, hiç <gülüyor> uh, bilmiyorum. <gülüyor> çok çok zor uh, Türkçe ilk kez um, <gülüyor> konuşmak. Um, <gülüyor> Oh, teşekkürler. Geri bildirim um, uh, sen, sen hakkında. Ah, um, te, te, telaffuzun um, uh, uh, çok seviyorum. Um, um, uh, um, ç- çok um, çok hızlı değil, çok uh, ç- hızlı Ah, yavaş değil. Um, yani per, uh, perfect um, sanırım. Um, uh, ben uh, konforlu uh, hissettim uh, bugün. Um, çok uh, uh, sinirli değil, heyecanlı. Uh, uh, heyecanladım ama uh, şimdi... Ra- ah, rahat, rahat uh, biliyorum. Uh, ben şimdi uh, sakin, um, uh, uh, güle güle. <gülüyor> Check out. <gülüyor> That was not so bad, but oh, oh, I did it. So that went pretty well, I think. I survived the 30 minutes. I asked about the basic classroom questions. I just realized I didn't screenshot the messages. So, damn. But I feel good. I understood maybe 90% of what she said. She was so nice. Didn't speak to uh, Chabuk, didn't speak to Yavash. It was was perfect. Oh, I am just really proud of myself that I did that. And I'm thinking next week I need to do it again. I really want to make this a habit because that felt good. And I think she seems like the teacher that's very prepared for beginners. So someone who's like upper beginner like me, I think um, like I can feel really good. I feel like that was worth it. I got my listening practice. I got my speaking practice for the first time. I got a bunch of really good vocab. Um, hell yeah, I am so glad I did this. I think today was super successful with this Turkish lesson. Basically what I recommend to you people is go into your lessons with a plan, with a goal, and you will get much more out of it. If you're worrying about speaking, I mean, if they are a language teacher, they should expect, you know, that you're not perfect and they should be very patient with you. I am really happy with what I did. I learned a very good uh, word today. I'm not uh, sinirli, I'm actually heyecanlı. Uh, heyecanlıyım. So, um, actually I'm not heyecanlıyım, ama şimdi heyecanlı değilim. Uh, sakinim, sakinim, rahat. Im, rahatim. You know what this is like? This feels like if you are learning to swim and you like jump into the ocean, like the first second it's kind of shocking, but after like a few minutes you're like, no, this is good, this is not that bad. So uh, very successful, I think. Good job to me. It's really important that you have fun while learning a language. So one of the things I do for fun to learn a language is write down all the lyrics of a song I like and then look at it like a piece of translation work. I try highlighting those words I don't know, putting them into my vocab, and... So it's like a vocab exercise where I introduce myself to real vocab and real context, but I can sing along when I'm done studying, so it makes 
learning vocab a lot more fun. So first, I'm going to write down all of the lyrics of this song. I'm going to be doing it for uh, Imdat by Murda and Hatise, which I've been obsessed with for the week that it's been out. Oh my god. Oh, I've been playing it every single day. I love this song and I need to know the lyrics because I've been singing it and half of the song I really cannot understand. So, time to write those lyrics first. Okay, so I spent a few minutes writing the lyrics to this song. Now I'm gonna go through these lyrics and really think about do I understand this grammar point? Do I understand this vocab word? And I'm going to go and highlight everything I don't understand fully or everything that I would like to check the dictionary for. I want to do that mainly because I want to visualize what I do and do not know. When I look back at some other translations I did, there's quite a lot of yellow and I want to be able to go back to this song in a few months and think, oh wow, uh, this was, you know, the transition to when I stopped needing to highlight everything. So I want to kind of visualize what I don't know, and it also helps me look it up in a few minutes. So I highlighted the words I don't know in this thing. I feel like I got quite a lot. There was a couple words that I was about to highlight, but then I thought about it, I'm like, oh, I completely understand. For example, Bakushlodin hala guzumununde. I didn't understand the full sentence, but then when I looked at guzumunun, no, guzumun, oh, he just said it, guzumun, I was like, oh, I understand, my eyes is, of my eyes, right? The word I really like in this one was sensislik. Sensislik? I really like this word because I kind of understand what it's trying to say just because of the roots, but I'm gonna use the dictionary anyway, so I highlighted it. The verse that Hadise was singing used ki in a very strange way. I couldn't understand what she was trying to say with that ki, but uh, this is for the dictionary. Time to find out. So what I'm about to do next is I'm going to look up all the highlighted words in the dictionary and write down the English translation for them to my best ability. So I think that was pretty successful. I learned a bunch of really good words, I think. Something I was noticing while I was translating was Actually, English is kind of unclear. It's really unclear what part of speech I'm speaking in. Sometimes I really have to use another language just to make that clear. So for example, you know, the name of the song is Indat, which means help. But when I write help in English, I don't know, am I talking verb and I'm talking noun? I'm talking about noun. So I wrote in Bulgarian Pomos just to quickly like understand, oh, okay, it's a noun. You know, later uh, there was the expression Guzumununde which um, kind of works closer to Japanese and Korean where it's, you know, place and then like a post position. So I wrote front of slash in Japanese, maini, just to make it clear for me in an instant what this thing is about. There was a couple words that the dictionary was kind of pushing me to notice go together. So for example, sözvermek is when you give a promise. In the context of the song, it wasn't sözvermek, but I saw söz, and then in the dictionary I saw, okay, it's always sözvermek, so I should always use sözvermek together. Something I thought was super weird was that tuhaf is a noun in Turkish, so like, it's a noun, but it's like translated in English like an adjective, so like, what? But okay, I accept whatever, it's their language, not mine. I think that was pretty good. I think uh, translating songs is a really fun way to get vocab. Now I'm listening to them singing it, and I'm realizing, oh, this is really fun. I really like learning these new words. And I'm probably gonna remember them easier now that I looked at the lyrics, kind of like a piece of poetry, really focusing on the meaning. So you should also incorporate some fun into your learning. Learning is not all about textbooks and lessons. It's also about having fun, so don't forget to have fun with your languages.
I'm just here to remind you real quick, if you've liked this video so far, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I also have social medias linked below if you want to see more of my language learning process. It is 3.45 a.m., so that means it's grammar time. Originally, I learned my Turkish grammar through Duolingo. Later, I got that Routledge, like, essential grammar for Turkish. I've been working on that. In my recent trip to Bulgaria, I also got another good textbook, which is Teach Yourself Turkish. I really think it's important to have multiple sources of grammar. One book might have a weak explanation, but the other one you totally connect to. So it's not so good to depend on one source of grammar. Maybe one's a book, one's a website. There's tons of grammar websites out there for like every language. And for me personally, I think it's really comfortable to learn the Turkish language by means of Bulgarian because there is a lot of shared cultural bits, even though the core of the languages are radically different. There's a lot of cultural things that I can understand from one time hearing them. What comes to mind is sujuk, cezve. When I first heard those words in a textbook, it was obvious to me, but also I couldn't define it in English just because it's such a very specific cultural thing and there's not one word that perfectly fits that. So I am a big supporter of learning a language through your non-native language. So now I'm going to do a chapter of my book while at the same time adding those words into my Anki. So I just finished chapter two of this book. I got a lot of really good words. There wasn't really any new grammar point for me because it was all really basic, but I got a lot of really good words and I put them into my Anki. Next, I need to finish my Anki words. I have a lot of Anki words in suspension because I didn't include the pronunciation. I love to always include pronunciation with my Turkish words on Anki. So I go to Forvo usually and download one of the pronunciations for the word that I'm looking for, include them in my Anki card so that when I'm going through the Anki words, I can hear the pronunciation at the same time that I'm seeing the word. I think for Turkish, it's particularly helpful to get a audio cue just because the pronunciation is so specific and unique. So it's time for me to do this really tedious task of going on Forfo and downloading a bunch of audio files. I have a really big backlog of words that I need to find pronunciations for, so I think I did enough for today. I don't know, I did like 20 or something, I don't know. The point is, when I'm learning, I really like to document every single word I learn. It can seem like a waste of time, but that small effort you put in those few seconds help you memorize it a little bit more. It kind of works for me. There's tons of really great apps out there that already have vocab ready for you in your target language, but I don't particularly like to use those because I don't feel so connected to these words. Whereas when I make the Anki cards myself, find the pronunciations myself, there's kind of a story to every single word. So in terms of vocab, I really like to be in control of my own life. So important two things, I like to be in control of my vocab. Two, I like to document every single vocab. Now I'm going to do some Turkish writing practice. I think writing is a really important skill that a lot of people avoid. Yes, I've heard that writing and speaking are really different skills, but really writing does help your speaking. What I really love about writing is that you can really take your time and think about your words and try to create the best sentence possible. You have all the tools you need to make a great sentence, but you're not limited 
by time. Um, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, um, um, uh. When you're in a conversation, you need to you know, quickly respond, so you probably end up doing something simpler than you're capable of. With writing, what I really love is you can take your time. People who are correcting your writing can look at it with a fine tooth comb and look at the details more specifically. Writing is basically a slow but really detailed speaking skill. So don't avoid writing, it's really important to learn. It's really important to learn, especially in those languages that do not use the Latin alphabet. Turkish does use the Latin alphabet, so uh, it's not in that group, but there are a lot of special characters in Turkish that don't exist in English. So personally, I like using a uh, tablet to use a digital keyboard to write my writings because you get the keys for the special characters. You know, on iOS, you can hold the key and get all the accent varieties of that same letter, but for some reason, they don't exist for the Turkish dotless I and then the uh, Turkish G with the breve. Come on, Apple, get your shit together. But using the digital keyboard is just a little bit easier for me. Handwriting is not important to me because uh, Turkish and English have the same basic alphabet, but my point is I want to get my thoughts into writing in a way that's as detailed as possible. On top of that, there's not much judgment when I'm writing, so I really like it. Now I'm going to just write something on the italki community, hoping that someone will correct me. So I just wrote a couple sentences in Turkish, just talking about the heat of the summer. And it was really good because I was able to encounter a few words that I never used before. I noticed I never talked about degrees in Turkish, but now I realize it's a word I already know, derece. There were some words that I didn't uh, know directly, but it was obvious when I checked the dictionary, like sejak look, so obvious. There was one word I needed to look up that I could never have guessed and I didn't know, and that was exaggerate. Abartmak. So I'm kind of glad I did this writing exercise. I was able to practice the uh, grammar and vocab I already knew while figuring out which pieces of grammar and vocab I was missing. So now I'm gonna post that on the italki community and wait for a response. There's a couple sentences that I think uh, were kind of bad, but we'll see what people online say about it. As you can see, I'm not strict at all when it comes to my language learning. I do whatever I want. Kind of the point is just to accumulate words and grammars and experience and kind of the hours of input that it takes to learn a language. You know, whatever I'm doing, if I'm getting input, it's an hour well spent. There's some positives and negatives to the way I do things. The positive is that I never feel burnt out because I do what I want. I never feel like I need to take a break from language learning because I'm only doing things that are fun. If I need to take a break, I'm probably doing a break from that particular activity. But there is a negative thing that I kind of stay in my comfort zone and I tried to get out of that comfort zone this week by speaking with a real Turkish speaker. So I kind of do have to like push myself to do things that are uncomfortable, but really everybody has to do that. What do you folks think about this language learning method. Is it too flexible? Is it too structured? How does it compare to your method? I'm glad I was able to really show you directly what I do in a language. I keep talking about theoretical stuff, but I wanted to bring it back to something very specific with this video, and hopefully it gives a better idea of what I do when I'm trying to learn language. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I also have my social links in the description, so you can follow me if you want to follow this language journey even farther. You can also check out my website at Study with Alex, where I write about language-related topics like I've talked about today. Sonradaki videonda görüşürüz. Hoşçakalın.